This Three Beards Media podcast may contain mature themes and may not be suitable for all audiences. I think my access was taken away uh, because I can't see and control like I used to to be able to put stuff on the screen. So I think uh, a while ago I pissed off our our man ship and he just took all my access because he didn't want me doing some stupid stuff. And we lost the sound. What up? This is why I stay out of that. <laughs> we got we got big play on here. There he is. We got Mr. Austin or not? Who's the, oh he just sent the ship just sent it. I don't know what he sent. Uh. But Austin's on here. We ain't, we've been trying to get him on for a while, so we're gonna get to you in a little bit. Oh, but before we we didn't get to this, um, we always do a recap after. So if you want to stay on after, you can stay on. We recap and talk about it. We never tell anybody that, and everybody jump off. So we can't really like say thank you to people like when we get done. So if you want to stay on when we get done, you know, say thank you there. Um, we got a special guest, Deshaun, on here. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. He might be a little nervous, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm not calling him <laughs> out, but I know yeah. this is like one of his first times being on. Oh, Marcus Pfizer to hey, jump to it. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, he go. is. <laughs> what up? What up? What's up? We just get started. We say we're going to start without you. You figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So we were just going through. Um, Lane Danielson may jump on here a little bit later. Um, you know, he has some um, Mondays. He has his kid has a uh, football practice. So just like you. Brent, he uh, he got stuff to do, so uh, he might jump on a little later with us. But uh, we here in the side of storm, new logo. If you haven't looked, you see the new logo, kind of showing uh, who we are. Man, I see a lightning bolt going through Brent's face. That's nice. I like how that just like overlays on everything. Um, oh, that is smooth. I ain't you see that? that. Yeah. yeah. But this is the uh, this is kind of a special episode because I don't know. I didn't write anything down. I didn't put any stats up. Uh, Cause I really just wanted to like wing it because I am going to be scripting and writing stuff for the next five days. So I wanted to kind of just go off the cuff and just let y'all lead this. Um, but I did want to start with a couple things and this is leading up. You're going to talk about the win and the loss, but what I really want to talk about with this one right here is this the week of the Jack Trice 100 game. So I'm starting off with that no matter what. And I don't care audience chime in when you want to chime in, but we're going to talk about it. We're gonna start it. So what it is a hey, ship? Who is who is Ruri? Who is that person? Hey, y'all see this chat? In yeah, the it's it's on your page. I can't remove it. I tried to remove it. So man, I'm about to block who is that? I don't even know. We're blocking that person. They ain't real. That's from Twitter. Uh <laughs> oh, not sorry. X. They are DMX in me. You know, you like that DMX in me. Hmm. I ain't got I ain't getting nothing. <laughs> Wow. Ah, <laughs> ah, dad joke. Um, so, but yeah. I, I don't hold on. Hold on. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, the the sound there you go. There it is. There it is. Oh, it, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I I brought that I, but I haven't wow. done that stupid in a while. Um, so, but 100 <laughs> years. What you got to say, big play? It, it's just. I'm on, I'm on the mood. I'm in the mood today. This is I'm in the mood. Hey man, get active, man. This is a great week for me. It's a busy week for me, but it's a great it. week for Trice Legacy. Um, that's why we got my man Deshaun, Deshaun on here. Um, I was looking to, to always support local. And as we look at this Jack Trice 100, I want to do a couple special things. And I reached out to my guy at Universal Cuts. Shout out to Craig Hunt over at Universal Cuts. Uh, when I come in town, he always gets me a cut. 
Um, and then my man, Michael Seto. I don't know if Michael's listening. Michael, if you're listening, um, he, I wore one of his shirts one time, me versus me. Uh, good dude, fitness trainer. If you need some uh, some advice on how to get that midsection out of there, because he's going to be working with me, because um, I got to get rid of that dad middle. Um, so he gonna, he's going to be working on some things out there. But he's a he's an influencer, and he's out there. Um, but he linked me up with Deshaun, and I'm going to let Deshaun show what he's been working on for me. But we want to honor Jack this year um, ongoing, because I shared a couple things about this Jack Trice 100. And the, the one thing is, October 8th is the anniversary of his death, 100 years ago. Had Jack Trice lived, as I said before, the season might not have gone on because teams did not want to play against Iowa State or Ames College because they had a black player on the team. So we don't know what the season would look like. We don't know if Jack lived. Will we be having a commemorative collection uh, through Iowa State? We don't know if we would have the five bars represented um, because they have meaning because of a tragic event. And – from the foundation, we want to continue with the man again, more than just football. But we're talking about John Trice, the, the collective, his government name, John. Um, you know, he went by Jack, but we want to talk about the whole man and how do we, um, you know, represent family, race, community uh, of what he was, what he was a part of. And so, when I was looking at ways to to honor him, Hy V came to a person I know and they brought me in and we got the cereal. So if you haven't seen the cereal, go to your local hy V, especially in central Iowa, uh, wheat flakes, um, sending boxes out. So if you want a box, uh, text 515-805-7523. Chip, can you put that on the bottom for me? 515-805-7523. Uh, we got some boxes. We're going to be giving out some boxes, um, but just text us there. And then peace tree and first down Bruin, first down Bruin, Sam anchor, uh, long snapper, walk on long snapper back in the day for Iowa State, came up with it. And, and this is one of the things we're going to be giving out at the at the event. It's a, a slap koozie, but it's the I, the I will, the legend beer slap koozie. So everybody that comes to our foundation, 515-805-7523. Um, That's a little thing about Max. It stuff pops up on my screen. Um, and so we're going to have some legend beer there. But – I had a pair of Air Force Ones. Now, I'm a big Air Force One person. I love Air Force Ones. And, you know, Nike's been doing the Nike, um, you know, customs for a while. You can get different shoes. And, you know, I was like, all right, that's cool. And I had this pair of all whites. Now, I don't know if Deshaun did anything with the toothbrush on there. You know, I ain't asked him that yet. But that's a toothbrush that was attached to them because those are the original OG re-re-re-releases. Um, but he was working on a pair of those for me. So I'm going to have him show those live. And those are mine. This pair of shoes that we're going to show – I'm wearing them on the field for the game. Uh, my daughter will be cheerleading at halftime. Um, I'm get I'm gonna be there with nationwide. I'm I'm sneaking on the field, they don't give me a pass, but they're gonna be worn on the grass at the game. And I'm keeping one shoe and I'm raffling or auctioning off the other shoe. Yes, one shoe. Somebody's like, you're gonna get one one shoe, put it on your shelf. I'm putting it on my shelf just to say it was on the field for the hundredth anniversary game. Piece of history, you'll never see it again, it'll never happen again. So <laughs> I'm raffling off or auctioning off. I don't know how much it's going to go for. Yeah, you know, I'm looking for the money people to come and give money, 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 money. You know, I, I don't have a, the graphic. I need money from how high, but <laughs> I need money. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're going to auction off that one. But also, Iowa State has an all-white mm -hmm. they're wearing. This, the white clear is clean. Um, you know, it was just, just plain Jane. You know, and Nike sold out of them because Iowa State bought all them joints. So I went to Shields. Shout out to Shields in West Des Moines, Jordan Creek. Donated three pair of these shoes. Um, and so I sent them to Deshaun after we worked on it with my Air Forces. And he's already released the Air Forces a little bit, but I wanted to show those in person. But he was working on an idea. I said, you the artist. These are some of my parameters. Do what you do. And so I know nothing about Deshaun except for somebody introduced me. So that's why I have him on here. I don't. He doesn't have to be on here the whole time. I want him on here for 15 minutes to talk about himself, talk about why he did these shoes for me, and 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 what he what his feeling is about him and how he feels about him because two of them so far are going to some special people. Um, one's going to go to the first recipient of the Jack Trice Endowed Scholarship from Iowa State Athletics, and that's Anthony Johnson Jr. So that pair is going to go up there. We're not going to reveal that one. We're not going to show that one yet because I want him to reveal that one his own when he gets the shoe. The other two, um, one pair is going to go to the second recipient of that award as well, and then the third pair will be auctioned off. Um, but Deshaun, I want you to be here for five minutes. Tell us who you are, what you're about, how you got into doing this, um, 
the collab with 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 the Trice Legacy Foundation and, and why you wanted to do it, and then just reveal the shoe and talk about what you put on the shoe and and how that came about. So Deshaun, the floor is yours, real quick on this episode of Side of Storm, brought to you by Revelton and Three Beers Media. Got you. So hey, I'm Deshaun. I'm from Des Moines, and I got into this business back in 2020. Uh, I played football in college at Waldorf, and I was just tired of everybody having the same cleats, and I always liked shoes, and I always like just drew in class. So I just like custom my own cleats, and then my teammates was like, "Dang, where'd you get those?" At? And I'm like, "I made them," and then they start asking for them. So then that's when I started getting in the business and just started doing it for teammates, and then moved on to friends and family. And so yeah. And um, I did this project uh, really because, like, it's, it is a big thing. I've seen it at the Iowa State Fair. I've seen it everywhere. Frosted, like, the Frosted Flakes. I've seen it at the stores. Like, it's a big thing. And, like, I'm big on that. Like, I, and being local, it meant a lot to me because George reached out and was like, you're from Des Moines. I want you to customize some. And it meant a lot because a lot of, like, Iowa player like Iowa people don't get that much attention, so like I, I felt happy and excited about them. So, uh, so let's do the reveal. Let's 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 see what you was working on, young man. All right, so here's the forces. Here's the forces, and uh, so I started out. George wanted the the reds be like old fashioned, like back in the day, and. I found this autumn red that I felt like it was a good color for it. And it, it turned out pretty good. And then I got the champagne gold to match the pants that uh, I would say is going to be wearing. And then the details. So, oh, go ahead. No, he's just, he just loving it. That's, oh, that's, 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 that's all good right there. <laughs> all right, all right. So then the detail work, uh, it says I will. And I was going to only put it on like just, just one I will, but then like, I was like, that's just too basic. And so I just put it around the whole like toe bottom. And uh, I was gonna put it around the whole shoe, but I'm like, that's doing too much. And I don't want it to be too busy. And then, so on the back, it has the the 100, 100 year anniversary with uh, Jack Trice, the face in the middle of the zero. Got that. And then on this pair, I got the, the symbol, Jack Trice symbol, the AIM symbol. And then I got AIMS right here. And then that's basically uh, the shoe right here. And I and that was the first pair I did before I did the other two. And I like so, that. Yes, those, those are my shoes. Why did everybody, everybody disappeared? But <laughs> yes, so those are my shoes. Like we're going to accept auction off one shoe. I'm wearing them on the field. So one shoe. Those are paid with my own money. That's not foundation money that we spent on those. That was my money. I had them sitting here, and I wanted something special. But everything I do comes back to the foundation. So now let's get to these. Let's show, just show one pair to please. Show the, the pair that's not going to the other um, recipients. Just show that one pair. Talk about that one. We'll let those recipients tweet out those and show this. But show this one and talk about this other one. So here's the, the pair of cleats right here. I got mm. different colors on them. And, 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 and Deshaun mm -hmm. did release a video in his story. So if you're on Twitter, DE underscore customs or under slash customs is where you can find them at on social media. And he did release a video of all the shoes. So you can see the two pair of shoes and the Air Forces on there if you want to get a better look at them. Yes, sir. So, yeah, got the AM symbol again on the front toe. And uh, I got... The legacy of Jack Trice with the uh, doves. And that's one of the things that I, I saw that and I was like, man, that was an accent that I never thought about. And again, when, when an artist is doing their thing, I don't like to I like to give them like my idea, but I'm not the artist. Otherwise, I'd be doing it myself. Right. So giving him the opportunity to do that and the doves because we're remembering them. And that's when doves fly is one of those things that represents somebody when they when they go to that next level. So um, I like that. And I look at it and say, you got the glow around it too. Like Bruce Leroy, mm. you got that glow. He's reached that next level. Is that, that glow? <laughs> hey, Clay, I know you smiling in there because you know I, I, I like you know, it, I know man. Yep. I'm trying to find a way to get, get these jokers. 
They don't, I don't have, what size you wear? 14. Okay, so. Oh, Ooh. Marcus, uh, I know you were like, what, 16, 18? Marcus. Marcus we're 18, so. bigger than that. You were 18, Marcus? Way bigger than that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're 18. So this Deshaun is uh, why he's showing these. Deshaun is going to be doing at least one more. So Alan Lazard will be wearing a pair of these um custom shoes. And I don't know if I told Deshaun that I had Alan wearing one of his shoes. So uh Deshaun, a size 13, when I get it, you'll be customizing one for Alan Lazard. So he will be calling you out, he'll be doing that. And now I know Brent need one. So big play need a 14. Marcus need an 18. You know, uh, but do you I don't even know if they're gonna find one? Huh? I don't know if you can find my size. Man, we got, we, hold on. Nike about to see this and we about to blow up. So we're going to find your size. I mean, if they can make color changing shoes for heat activated shoes for Oregon, they can, they can come up with it. Did you see them, them heat activated shoes? Mm-mm. Uber no, the cleats. Uber that. the cleats that Oregon wore against uh, Prime. They were heat changing. So when your I feet made a wet, pair of, huh? uh, in color forces. Oh, he's for real? Yeah, I made a pair of those before. Yeah, so the heat from your shoes and it makes them change color. Like yep. that's what Oregon did in them shoes against Prime. They wanted to show up in sunglasses. <laughs> he sold four point two million dollars in sunglasses in a week. They wanted to say, "What can we do to top sunglasses?" Color changing shoes. Uh, sorry, my son. Maybe this is how we get off on tennis. This time. Go ahead, my man. Okay, yeah. So <laughs> I had the action when I first did them. Like I was just messing around with them. So you see, how I did like the different colors: the gold, the red, and then the uh, I did words, but the words are just red. I didn't put the white on yet, and I was like, nobody's gonna be able to read that. So then um, I put the white mm. around it to make it pop, and it showed out pretty pretty well. And then nice. I got the the hundred on here again with Jack Trice on it. Um, yep. And then this this pair, I have a silhouette on here. Mm. Then I got Ames on the side, and then I got I will. Right here, so yeah, that's that's the uh, pair right here. I appreciate that. So much yeah, love dope. for you doing that, man. And, and you know, and, and like I said, you know, going with someone local, a local artist, finding someone, giving them opportunities, and that's one of the things the foundation is looking to do is you know give opportunities. And some of the things we're doing um, uh, for the tailgate, we're supporting a couple small um, you know black owned businesses as well with some lemonade we'll have at the event that you can see find us on, on on social media and then some cookies and cakes and things like that that will also be there from a local a local bakery but deshaun i really appreciate what you're doing um i really appreciate you taking your passion and and finding a way to do it in a positive way um because again we have still never met we won't meet until like this week on thursday or something like that when i pick these shoes up um mm-hmm. and we will have them displayed at the tailgate if you come to the tailgate go to trice legacy facebook you'll find the uh, tailgate information buy a ticket even if you're not going to be there still buy a ticket because we will have some raffle prizes that you can win without being present um but to, again deshaun doing that for us um i really appreciate that and i really wish you well in everything you do please give us your your uh your handle on on your social media again so people can find you and look at the work you're doing um and the work that you will do okay yeah appreciate it for having me on here and uh my handle is de underscore customs on instagram and tiktok de underscore customs look them up check them out i saw them tag nike customs in there so i yeah. saw that so show make sure that work is up there man because uh you're doing your thing appreciate it appreciate it all right man well, hey salute you we appreciate you i'll be in touch with you this week uh but thank you for jumping on with us yes sir thank you all right my man thank you good luck kid thank you yeah good, good luck man. man. appreciate you Yep. So, you know, again, that's a good young man. Uh, met him through. So we know he's doing some things because I've met him through people that are doing things in the Des Moines area. Um, you know, I'm a part of the Ames, the Ames Chamber of Commerce, and now I've joined the Des Moines Chamber of Commerce. Uh, like I said last week or two weeks ago, Waterloo and Davenport are next on my list um, because that's where the, the community need the biggest to have the biggest need in Iowa as we start to build the communities and help these kids get to that next level. So, Sam, I'm always willing to take your money. Um, so whenever you want to give it to me, what, just, just go ahead and, and pass it on because Sam is the one that kind of came up with the idea. You know, I try to take some credit, but he came up with the idea of these slap koozies. You know, <laughs> people use these. I mean, everybody that gets one of these from the tailgate, this is also a great koozie for when you do rag bry because it rolls right over your right over your bike frame. Wow, there it is over your bike frame. So when you stop at all them stops along the way, cold beverage. 
<laughs> well, Sam and I played together, so big shout out, Sam. Sam, if you want to you wanna get on, man, we will send you the link. Sam, if you want to get on and talk to Austin, you let you let me know. Just put a post out there. We'll have the we'll oh have him uh, send you that. But so I have never met Sam either, Austin. So he reached out to Iowa State, and they didn't want to tell him they had a beer coming out that was going to get their funds. Um, so they directed him to me, you know, because it wasn't going to make them money. So they came to me, and I'm like, all right, cool, let's do this, Sam. And Sam only has is a small coming up brewery, and so the partner with Peachtree was able to get us. Um, more uh beer so we went through like um what was it two thousand cases sam correct me if i'm wrong did we stop at two thousand so far or are we still at about two thousand cases that are there um ten of them will be at the at the um event but yeah so hearing, hearing sam's story sam has um you know partnered with me well um with this red corn ale and like we become like pretty cool even though we haven't met it's like he was texting me the other day i'm like this weekend i'm like i'm trying to get my outfit together like it's the first day of school you know <laughs> So it was like, yeah, a whole bunch of stuff. So I was like, man, what, what can I wear with these shoes? Cause I got another custom pair of shoes out. Um, a pair of, me and my cousins coming in. So me and two, two of my cousins are coming in, my first cousins. So we got all, all got a uh, custom Hirachis on. So you will see these Hirachis around uh, in Iowa State colors with a uh, Trice Legacy on them. Uh, but the three family members, we uh we got some Hirachis custom made too. Not painted and custom custom, but as custom as Nike would allow us to do. Um, but I digress. We want to welcome Austin on here. Um, Austin, we uh, we really appreciate you jumping on with us. You know, we'll get Sam on here one day to talk with us. He can Sam, if you want to call my cell phone, we can patch you in through cell phone. So if you call me, I'll get you patched in uh, to talk and ask some questions and tell some embarrassing stories about Austin. Uh, that's what we like to do on here. Um, Austin, what are you up to these days, man? Welcome on. Tell us about what you're doing these days. And, yep. um, you know, just just talk to us, man. Yeah, appreciate y'all having me on. Um, I live in Oakland right now. I've been in the Bay Area since 2017. Uh, was doing the medical consultant gig, but uh, recently I transferred over. I switched over to uh, still a sales job, so I've been in sales for a long time. But uh, I've got a team. I'm regional vice president at a hospitality company, so we do restaurant point of sale, so like software uh, for restaurant owners. Uh, so that's been fun. But yeah, man, I love the Bay. Northern California's love, like. It's way, I mean, it's obviously, it's a lot different than, than where I grew up at. I grew up in Ames and then lived in North Carolina for a little bit. Um, you know, besides the taxes and, uh, you know, my rent, <laughs> California is cool. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying it out here. And it's fun to, it's fun to catch up with y'all because, you know, I, that's one element that I've lost. I think, you know, I've been out of Iowa for about 10 years now, but like, you know, having that camaraderie, being able to talk about it weekly, but Iowa State, like, I love that. And I get to see Marcus Fizer, man. I grew up, I was in the, I was in the driveway pounding the ball, posting <laughs> my buddies down. Like I was number five in the pack. Right, like, right. Don't make food. me too old Honestly, now. Don't make me too old now. Don't make me too old now. Come on. Now. <laughs> uh, no, but man. thank you for having me. I really appreciate y'all. Really do. Yeah, man. No, we appreciate you jumping on. Uh, you know, Marcus, he just aged you, man. Sorry about that. Hey, just a hey, number, brother. That's all. As long as I'm good. still here, <laughs> yeah. Appreciate so, it. you too, brother. <laughs> so, hey, I've, we've, it's been two weeks. Marcus, Brent, what y'all been up to? Anything y'all want to update us on? Um, everything good with y'all? Because it's been a couple weeks. Man, life is life, man. You know, I just got back in town from Tennessee. Uh, went to see my grandmother. wasn't doing so great, but. Had a lot of uh she showed a lot of improvements when when i was in town so you know i was a plus man and you know we working and my team is five and one right now uh we take on the number one team this friday uh in southeast polk so um it'll be a big challenge for us to see where we where we land so is it a home game or is it uh, at southeast it's a home game home game man i'll be at the order to know otherwise i'd be down there um but i got a I got to smooth and kiss babies and shake hands. Man, um, that's what you do best, hey, sir. Hey, that's, that, is, that is what I do, ain't it? Hey, you know, I'm you do it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mark? I mean, just same old, same old, you know, week in and week out, trying to keep these kids healthy, <laughs> fed, and everybody, you know, living one more breath, one more day. <laughs> just continuously, you know, progressing on in life. Um, you know, that's That's about it. Watching these games, just trying to take it in all as a fan now, and uh, just hoping for some victories, man. Yep, yep, that's what's up. Um, I'm happy that the uh, 
the weather has uh kind of cooled down for us. I'm I am so excited about going back to Iowa this weekend. I think it's gonna be like 60 degrees as a high on Friday. Like, and people are like cringing that. And I'm like, that's awesome. That's football weather. That's fall football weather. And I don't get that out here. You know, and it's like right now it was still it was 85 and beautiful today. It was beautiful, but it wasn't, you know, football weather. Like I didn't want to eat no chili. <laughs> you know, I didn't I didn't want to eat that heavy hot food. You know, it's still too hot for that. But I going back for a week, about four days, <clears throat> getting out there Thursday and being able to put a sweatshirt on every day and just kick it. Like, man, I might have to That's why you gotta move to the bay, George. That's like it every day. So you shine and just throw a hoodie on. Oh, man. Man. But hold on, y'all sometimes wear bubble jackets too. Like like it's a like it's five <laughs> degrees outside. Walking around wearing bubble, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, right. Canadian goose feathered pillows and coats yeah. and yeah. You're right. Yeah. I lived in Sacramento for a minute. So I was in Sacramento from uh from 13 to 15. And then I was in LA before that. So I loved LA. But yeah, the bay, what is they what do they say about the bay? The coldest uh the coldest summer you ever get, like <laughs> you don't know what the yeah, weather is. Coldest winter is it summer, whatever. Something yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, it's something crazy out there. We call but... it an Indian summer, but hey man, it's all it's all good. <laughs> this is the best time of the year to be out here. So yes, yes, <laughs> no, this is great, man. But you know, we um, you know, we're going against TCU up here uh this this uh Saturday coming up, and you know, but we uh huh, is our <laughs> We won the game before this week. We beat Oklahoma one. State. We beat yeah. Oklahoma State. And I wish we'd have had an episode to talk about that. Because now we're talking about 29 unanswered. Mm. 29 unanswered. Mm. Quickly. I was I was on Twitter. I was on Twitter letting them have it. And then before I knew it, <laughs> man, all, said, all four of those times were playing. I was like, <laughs> man. <laughs> so I can't even finish a tweet. Uh, man, I mean, no. the defense has been what's been holding us together. I think even last year, having the season we had, the defense again stopping less than. I mean, all of our games except for one last year, I think, was lost by less than a, less than a touchdown. And this year was continuing the same way. The game with losses we had less than a touchdown, and then to get blown out this way by twenty. Been a while since we since this has happened to us. Um. 30, sorry. sorry. I didn't want to I didn't want to say it. 30. Um that's a lot. The defense, what happened to the defense? What happened? Where 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 did they go? Well, I didn't watch the game. So you know, not, you had us stuff going on. You had us stuff going on. So I couldn't I didn't watch it, but the box score looked pretty ugly. All I saw was 520 some yards for the other guys. So mm-hmm. figured they were doing a lot of stuff right on the passing game because their run game it looks like they only gave up like a buck 20, buck 30 or something like that. But it seems like everything was going crazy through there. So I don't know. You guys can feel well, me. Man, I now. think, I think, you know, I, I, I got it. I was lucky enough to sit down and get it, take a peek at it. And whew, it was a tale of two halves, right? Like the first mm-hmm. half. They were running the football consistently. Hadn't done that yet this year. You know, they were yep. running it like downhill. It looked like the Cyclones of old, you know, with Brees and David and them running downhill. And, you know, passing game was hitting too. Uh, but, man, that quarterback for OU, as much as, like, he made me cringe. You know, you watch a guy and he's, like, bumping into our guys, trying to talk mess. It's like, man, you're the quarterback. I, you know how it is, Curve. Like, come on, man. Like, mm-hmm. you're the quarterback. Right. But he right. was talking a lot. But he was backing it up, man. He, he was a true dual threat, and they 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 can have an answer for him all night. Like, he was able to get where he wanted to go at any time. So, you know, the first time I saw that defense, like, really struggle with the quarterback, like, for a while, like you said, George. Yeah. He struggled a little bit. You know, you, you think about the fact that, um, you know, I, I, wanted, I bet you about 80% of the fans, you know, went and took a bathroom break after that pick six at the beginning of the game. They're like, man, I'm done with this. And they probably went and took a bathroom break. We came back and scored. So it's like, hey, we we can do this. Yeah, we're we going to have some mistakes. We're going to have some growing pains. But, yeah, it was uh, a tale of two halves. That second half was just like nothing. And, and Curve, you said, you said it well about the yardage. And so I pulled up the stats for TCU. TCU was averaging total yards for 487 a game. And they're holding opponents 
the 370, yeah. I believe, is what it is. Yeah, 370. But they're scoring almost that 500, that 500 yards. Um, now per play about six, so it's not it's not like they're big plays per se on that. Um, but their passing is about what is it saying? Average per attempt about about eight. Um, rushing yards gained uh, about four and a half. So it means that they're just they're just pounding. They just pounded and they're they're holding, they're having the game, they're having control of the game. <clears throat> is what I'm seeing here. They're controlling the pace, they're controlling the game as they want to. Now, people are gonna be like, you know, you look at TCU, TCU has their ups and downs as well. Um, but they have always been a thorn in our side. And and you know, that, that's no pun with the horn frogs, but they've always been a thorn in our side. Um, because you never know what's really gonna happen. Oklahoma State wasn't ranked this year, and we beat them, what we typically do, but Oklahoma, seeing that. Seeing that second half, you know, I just, I just wanted to like throw, throw the TV off, take the TV off the wall and throw it. Like you can't, mm-hmm. you can't do that and expect to. You can't, you can't be that way. I mean, Marcus, what, do you, what did, what did you see? Well, well, for me, like it's easier to, I guess you would say, analyze other games when, when I'm watching us. Like I, I'm, I'm really in fan mode. So, you know, it goes from being happy to pissed off to, you know, <laughs> slamming shit and all that type <laughs> stuff. You know what I mean? So I, it, a lot of times I'm watching, I'm like, hey, I, I got to sit down and try to pay attention to a little bit more and get out of this fan mode. But the passion be so deep inside because I want to win, win the ball game. You know, so, you know, the pick six, the turnovers, the fumbles, all of that, the missed c- coverages, you know, when they drop back and they just like, come on, I could have caught that guy. Like he's so wide open, I could have threw the pass to him, you know that type stuff. So, I, I to be honest, a lot of times I'm just like, you know, the numbers, how many, you know, r- rushes we've stopped or how many rushes they have. I really don't be knowing a lot of it for our games. Like if I'm watching other games, then I'm, you know, like you know X's and O's. But I, I turn so much into the fa- to the fan when I'm watching us. It's like, man, I just want to win. So it's like, man, like I take it to heart. When things aren't going good, and when they are going bad, and when they are going good for us, you know, I'm, I'm tweeting, I'm, I'm jovial about it all over Twitter. But you know, as soon as they go bad, I'm, you know, you see the whole fan come out of me too. So I mean, shit, y'all the football guys. <laughs> I don't, I don't we know. All, you we all me. know too that football was your is your first passion. So it, it, it is, <laughs> it is. But but I mean, like now I'm the fan. Like just. You know, wanting to watch. You know, I got the football game on now. Wanting to watch it and seeing what's going on. You know, those ex like like you know, Curve got on there and just said you know about the number of yards. I hadn't even looked at that. I'm once we lost, I'm like, oh, I'm not even worried matter. about no other games. And, <laughs> you know, just, right. My whole mood is yeah. gone. You know, because we we coming off a win. We playing Oklahoma now. You know, we're we're playing good in the first half. I'm still in that fan mode. Yeah, I'm just looking at our stats. You know, we talk about our total offense. In our total offense, we have we averaging about you know 317 yards per game, and that's below the average of what TCU is holding their teams to. So as we as we noodle on that, I do want to go to our first break and uh, shout out Revelton. Uh, so Revelton, you know, tell us about Lucy. At Revelton Distilling Company, everyone has become a part of the Revelton family, from the Taylors and their daughter who helped perfect their award-winning gins, to the team who installed Lucy our 33 foot tall custom made still right down to the local farms that provide our coveted corn and even the cows on those farm who consume our mash byproduct. Want to see the farm to flask come to life? Now you can tour Lucy and find out where we take Iowa's harvest and transform it into our finest spirits. Choose between a 45 minute tour or find out even more by scheduling a VIP behind the scenes tour to get the taste of the full Revelton experience. You can visit them at 1400 West Clay Street in Osceola, Iowa, or find all of Revelton's award-winning spirits at any local grocery or spirits retailer. Thanks, Chip. And hey, I'm liking the the darker background on our on our commercials. I like that. I think that goes with our um, our cast a little bit. Um, but as we talked about that Revelton, I do want to shout out. I haven't told Marcus and, and Curve yet, but we have uh, added a sponsor that we're going to be adding, and I want to shout them out now because they have committed. So Sweet Caroline's Whiskey River, they are now one of our sponsors. So I want to shout out them. They're up in Ames and in Ankeny, but Sweet Caroline's Whiskey River, they want to be a part of this. Um, nice. I'm waiting to see some more, but 
We do want to shout you out now. I'm gonna let them know we shouted them out early. They haven't paid me the money yet. I don't know what it's gonna, how much it's gonna be, but I just want to get some sponsors. You know, as Marcus says, uh, Art Austin, we talk about that Joe Button money. Uh, we're trying to see I mean, if we can Joe get that. <laughs> but I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm going. I'm going a whole other way. You know what? I want to. I want to gain nine hundred thousand followers in one week. So Taylor Swift, can me and you go out on a date? Or act like we did. Just, can I just put your picture next to my picture so that I get nine hundred thousand <laughs> followers? Um, they, my jersey ain't gonna go up four hundred percent like Travis Kelsey's jersey came out. But the, but Kelsey has changed. If you look at Kelsey, he had the full beard and everything. You know, yeah. from Cleveland, he was a different hey, dude. The NFL's up to something, man. I'm telling and you. Did you do you see it? <laughs> now you saw? Did you see before the game yesterday that they had like a special intro? With Carson Daly had a special intro before the Sunday night game, you know about about Swifties. Y'all see that? No, see I it. missed that. They had a little episode because again, Kelsey's jersey sales are four hundred percent up, and he gained nine hundred thousand followers in that week since he was on TV. Um, and wait, what's crazy. crazy about that is I didn't hear the whole news story, but I was watching the news day this morning i heard it on it there asu arizona state university who's now part of the big 12 is having a class that's based on taylor swift i don't know if it's it's not based on her per se but it's based on i guess how she just does it i don't i don't know i'm gonna google it to find out but it was on the news this 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 swifty or whatever they call it um yeah oh wow yeah, toya we are talking about we're talking about taylor swift we're talking about her <laughs> you know, we're talking about Taylor because I don't know what, how is she, how is she, she's America's sweetheart, but she changed Travis Kelsey. He only got a mustache now. I don't recognize him. He's not the Cleveland dude I knew. I'm from Cleveland. I got a goatee. I got at least a goatee. Tell me about it. I think about Taylor Swift and Kelsey. Y'all even, y'all I think you better keep winning fo- uh, Super Bowl. Huh? So, <laughs> huh? I think you better keep winning the Super Bowl. You got to. Uh, it's going to be a yeah. problem. <laughs> I mean, you know, he, he was a Super Bowl champion before he met her. Oh, I don't, uh, we don't know when he we, met her. We so don't. We don't, no. we don't. All right. Yeah, and I but I I'm haven't heard saying. anything. Like, his his uh, ex-girlfriend hasn't said anything. Oh, oh she, she has. She's on, she was on Instagram. Oh. She was on Instagram what, earlier. What a, can, you, can you tell us a little bit what she, what she, what she was talking about a little bit? She was, I mean, you know me, I don't get deep, but you know, if it <laughs> you click on it and it has that long, that long bar that they go, I, got, I, I, you probably gonna get 15 seconds out of me. <laughs> you know, my wife all the time, she's on TikTok, <laughs> she's always sending me these TikToks, and they be like 17 minutes. I be like, I am not watching all of that, I'm, I'm just not watching all of that. But uh, she was saying something about not like he's high maintenance, he's like he's very demanding or something like that. Oh, um, controlling. Is, is okay. what I think, you know, and you know, she started talking a little bit, and it got about to the 17, 18 second. And I was trying to go on past that because I'm not, I'm not trying to get that in my psyche. But yeah, I saw, I saw a little bit of it earlier. Oh uh, yeah, because um, Toya, Toya said she said he's a cheater. Now, you know, I'm I'm a married man. I'm a man. I'm, I'm gonna say this because it's my podcast. Oh, she saw it all. She she saw it all. Okay. Yeah. Um. I saw his, his ex girlfriend. <laughs> we all saw her, I, and I saw oh, Taylor yeah. Swift. I'm a, we all saw that comparison. I like people, oh. like <laughs> people, people. But what I'm saying is, there's a difference. Now, a little bit. Taylor is like, like she, they need two Taylors. Two Taylors. <laughs> <a little>. <laughs> Who take what you say, babe? Oh, my wife said never. She heard me through the door. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it was two tailors. But I digress. I digress. Uh, he, he he wasn't thinking toy. <laughs> toy said she a baddie. I I, I but 400 percent in my cell, 900 followers. He knows something we don't know. He don't he knows something we don't know. 
And you know, just like I, I like, I like Sam. Sam said, "Put that. Can you, hey, ship? Can you take that number off and put uh, Sam's comment up there?" Because, but baby, what I liked about that was I think about Mary J. Blige. Mary J. Blige has a, her albums are always great, but you could tell the tone of it by if she's happy or if she just went through something. Right. So, Sam, I think you're right because this is going to be the greatest album Taylor Swift ever comes. And she's not going to be American Sweetheart because, I mean, well, no, she will because everybody's going to side with her because she's American Sweetheart. But this is going to be interesting because I don't think it's going to last long. Um, but if you win the Super Bowl, then what happens? <laughs> yes. But 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 then what happens if, if you know, if they break up, wh- whose fault is it? Like, they, they're not going to think it's her fault. No, she's American right. Sweetheart. Right. right. The yeah, Austin, you ain't saying that. You can laugh back there. Yeah. <laughs> what the, you got I don't know, hey, I don't know what, we're about. <laughs> you know what we're talking about. You know, no, I do. I'm you just see. tired of her getting every 30 second clip on every. I'm trying to watch the game here, like, right? You know, so, no disrespect. Taylor Swift is probably the most like uh profitable musician of all time or entertainer of all time. She's got it down pat. I think that's why they put those classes out there. Like, you can figure out how to monopolize yourself. Yeah. I think Stanford's doing it too. Are they? But okay. uh, yeah, my my two cents on this is my wife. My wife started this, and she's smart. the The NFL is up to something. We're trying to get the ratings up. We're trying to right. make sure that we see the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Like, mm-hmm. there's something behind it, I think. And you know, if the NFL profits off of it, like, yo, I think there's something to it. I went. I'm with you on that. Um, yeah. I, I'm with you on that, especially with everything going to YouTube. I have YouTube TV, but you know, the, the way the way things are going. It's about that money and how you're going to make that money and how you're going to keep people back engaged. Again, showing Taylor Swift. I know this, this show ain't even about her, but showing Taylor Swift at the football game, you know, at the Chiefs who are the reigning Super Bowl champs, when you show that, if, again, if Travis Kelsey went up 900,000 followers, how much did you think the NFL went up last week? Like, what were the ratings on right. Sunday night's game when they had Carson Daly doing a little show on her in the beginning, you're talking about the, you know the new classes coming out. What was what is going on here, and and in, in this world, and, and that is the story. You cut to her every five seconds when Kelsey does something good. You cut to her when Kelsey does something bad. You cut to her. What is it? And and that's that's just the question for the ages, man. You got something figured out, man. Put that on the screen. Hold on. Put it on the screen, Diddy. I still owe you a, a shirt. If they break up, her next number one hit will be losing you would be a travesty. <laughs> <laughs> you are the dad joke winner. I wish I had a world. Oh, oh man. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Oh, yep. You know, and, and you're right. You know, because I, I think about this, Toya. And I was talking about this other day. And we talked about this a little while ago before you jumped on. But we were talking about Dion's uh, glasses pre-sold $1.2 million in like two days. And then within a week, they pre-sold $4.2 million for his sunglasses, pre-orders of the sunglasses. Don't know where it is now because he's been kind of losing, you know. Again, his, his son didn't look good at quarterback uh, last week. You know, Hunter's out still for a couple more weeks at least. Um, so it didn't look as good. But Oregon, you know, we were talking about that, had color-changing shoes. They were heat-activated by um, the, the ink and the pigment in the shoes. You know, it's what, what where can they get this money? Like, it's all about the money and about the ratings because I think things have been changing so far. And the NFL was losing some things because I know that the the two leagues decided they were going to combine for a summer league. So we're going to have football all year round, right? Did you hear about that, Kirby? No, I didn't. They're the two, the two leagues um, are these two leagues are like are forming, they're coming together, like semi-pro leagues that have football in the summer, and they're going to get in a bigger conglomerate. And we're gonna have like a summer football league that's gonna be coming out, kind of like the XFL and the, the UFL, something like that's coming out, and they combine. And now it's so there's gonna be summer, some kind of summer league going on. Because again, I don't know what this is about. I don't know where this money's coming from. And there's a lot of things shuffling right now. Um, because I think the American people, you know, aren't spending the money like that they, like they used to. And these tickets and things like that are astronomical prices. Because I'll tell you, I'm a Browns fan, and I I didn't I yesterday if the Browns would have won. I was going to buy a Sunday ticket. Not a fair weather fan. I'm still going to support them. I'm not paying $300 to watch them lose. Like, no, I don't really, I don't, I don't want to do that. It's the same thing like, oh, if I go to the Super Bowl, would I rather buy the nicest TV I can buy, 85 inch for like 3000 or pay for a ticket? I got right. good bathrooms and food 
and toilet paper in the privacy of my own home right. and get the better get a better view than the three thousand dollars up in the nosebleed I'd be paying right. for. As a fan, as a as a as a sports as a sports person, you know, I don't I don't get as involved as some people do. I'm not gonna let it affect my day. You know, I'm, I'm gonna be like, dang, they lost. Man, what the hell are they doing? They're gonna be mad for like five seconds. You gotta you gotta move on and do your thing. You can't let it consume your life. They're playing, they're playing and getting paid to play what we're paying them to do. Um that's just my take on it. You know, Mark, I know you were y'all being at these next levels, you might have a different opinion. But that's just my opinion, Mark. I'll let you jump in on that one. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I'm the same way, like we saw something to saying that the, you know the, the Super Bowl is here in Vegas this year or next year, whatever for the season. My wife was like, "You want to go?" And I was like, "Hell no, I'm, we're yeah. not paying paying for no Super Bowl. Like, I will watch it right on the TV or somewhere where you know we're we're comfortable because it'll be ten thousand dollars to be sitting up in the nosebleed. No." No, I watch it right here. Um, I'm and I'm the exact same way. Like I, I, I enjoy the games. I, you know, want to see, you know, my team do well. But I'm, I'm also fair about, you know, what goes on. At being an ex athlete, ex pro athlete, you know, the ins and outs, outs and ends of, you know, what goes into preparation and yada 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 and all that. So at the end of the day, you know, once it's over, I was always the, you know, the player that, you know, once the game was over, it was over. Um, you know, my wife, she's been through some of the things, you know, with some of the other wives at the game where if the husband had a bad game and, you know, she said they said, you know, oh, it's going to be a, a hard time at home tonight. And my wife was like, what do you mean? He's like, you know, well, he had a bad game, yada, yada, yada. My wife's like, Marcus never brings that home, you know, because it's just two different worlds. You you have to try to separate them both. Some people can, some people can't. Uh, but for me, it was just, you know, what I'm doing at that time, you know, it's 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 the love of the game. It's you know my job, and when that job is over, you know, being a family man, the husband, and you know the father, what, what is what comes in next? And and so for people who, you got a lot of people that's doing a lot of things. You got a lot of people that's betting a lot of money, and this is you know what they call their livelihood or whatever. So they take it too deep. Blood pressure is through the roof, having heart attacks. I'm not trying to go through all of that. I'm just trying to, you know, be calm, watch the game. Hopefully my team win. If my team don't win this week, we get on to the next week. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like that. I like that. Austin, you got anything on that one? Man, I popular, uh, probably unpopular opinion. I'm in the, I'm in the stands. I like to go. I like to be in the environment, man. I've always been that way. Uh, you know, cost is always something. I live in the Bay. Like, you know, you go to Warriors game on a Tuesday night is 300 bucks. So, like, I'm not doing that. But, like, if, it, if the occasion presents itself and, like, you know, this may never happen, but if the Vikings play a Super Bowl somewhere close to me, I'm going to that. But yeah. will that happen? Probably not. You know, that's my Sundays, y'all. <laughs> they, they won. They won. They won. So you're watching Kirk Cousins, knowing that I'm not, that we're not going to where I want to go. And I got to still watch. Kirk Cousins, <laughs> yeah, Kirk Cousins would win if his wife didn't pick out his plaid shirts at all of them. I watched no, hey, days, Kirk Cousins would win. He takes Tuesdays off. If you watch that Netflix thing, he takes Tuesdays I, I off. Saw I, I, I saw it. I saw it. Yeah, you, <laughs> you can't take Tuesday off. <laughs> I saw that. Oh, uh, that stuff is that's great stuff, man. <laughs> but you know, it, it is it is it's crazy there, and 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 it's good to talk about this stuff because I I like to talk about it because as we think about you know um, our Iowa Staters in in the um, in the stands. Now I will tell you, um, I had to go home um, for a funeral. Um, one of my my best friends from high school. His mom passed a pancreatic cancer um, mm -hmm. on Thursday. Um, she had been battling that, and you know, um, just caught it late. Uh, so I gotta, I gotta get. I'm, I'm in Iowa this weekend coming up. Then I gotta get on a flight when I come back and go to go to Cleveland to give him some love and some, some support. Uh, the Browns play the 49ers there, so while I'm in town, I'm gonna try to go to the game. Um, you know, go. I mean, my thing is representing, going to see Iowa Staters play. Um, I'll do that. But I got to get Brock Purdy to get me a ticket, like somewhere close, like not up, up top, but somewhere. So Brock, mm. if you're listening, I know you're mm. not. That, but, should be, that should be the easy. <laughs> word. Brock, if you're listening, uh, <laughs> my Miles Minnison, um, I was with your parents, and I know you're still good friends with Purdy. Uh, Purdy, holla at your boy. You don't know me. My name is George Trice. I'm an alumni of Iowa State. I'm going to come support you. Name is but I'm going to sit in the dog pound. So please get me a ticket in the dog pound because I'm a brown for life. Uh, 
<laughs> that ain't gonna you know, happen. You talk about hey Austin, you talk about you know the Bay Area. So uh you know Marcel. Yep. Howard. So his brother played played at UNI. Uh, he played for the Raiders. So we went out to a couple of Raiders games when 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 he played, because I was again I was living right down the street. Uh so we went out there and sales birthday is at the end of October. And I was in Chicago and they're like, Hey, Austin's playing in Cleveland. I'm like, say less. I'm like, let's go. So we took three carloads from Chicago to to Cleveland. Our homeboy had enough points for uh, Hilton, so we bought our Hilton hotels, and then we went out and ate with, with uh, Austin. Um, and he got us tickets, and I think we traded his tickets. And I was like, hey, we sit in the dog pound because we this is what we gonna do. So Marcel had mm-hmm. never been in the dog pound. Marcel had never been in the Muni court out there, uh, M- Muni field, and we're walking around and people seeing him. He got invited places I didn't even know exist, and I'm from there. Like, these these buses that Marcel was like, hey, Marcel, big dude. Hey, big dude, come here. Who are you? Oh, yeah. Okay, come in this bus. Man, <laughs> I'm, right, yeah. right, I'm right behind him. They couldn't see me. I'm like, in the building, this bus. Man, it was wild. Um, <laughs> but Marcel, hurt, Marcel yeah. hates Cleveland because, and I'm, Marcel, I know you're listening to us. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, Marcel hates Cleveland. He hated going there with me because, Marcel made the Lions last preseason game. He made it all the way through to the Lions fourth game. And it was against Cleveland in Cleveland. And he rebroke the wrist that he broke in college. And because it was pre-existing and he had broke that same wrist, they cut him saying that that was not something they were willing to take on. Mm. And so he got cut from the team. Now, Austin, I know he ain't listening. Marcel got better feet than Austin's. You know, it's like you gotta Austin, you gotta, you gotta, you your feet ain't the same as, as your big brothers, but you good, but he had better feet. I hope he ain't listening <laughs> because I'm gonna see him this week. He's gonna be at the game this weekend. I got him tickets, he's gonna probably punch me in the face, it's gonna hurt. <laughs> my homeboy, I've known him since he was like 12. Um, but yeah, I mean it's just you know, you go there, you look at these things, um, you know, just always want to support, you know, the home team and um, you know, the home players. So I mean, I'm just glad seeing Purdy doing what he's doing to be the last pick of the draft. Um, you know, going out there and showing coming back from the injury and still. It's only two undefeated teams, and and he is one of them. So he's, you know, he's undefeated in the league, right? He has not, he has not lost a game. Well, regular regular season, season. start to finish, regular regular season, regular season, yeah, regular season, yeah, yeah. He hasn't lost a regular season game since he's been. I mean, and that's just phenomenal for him to be doing that. Um, you know, I'm I'm out here. I'm about I'm about 45 minutes to an hour away from where he grew up. He went to school in Gilbert, but he's from Queen Creek. Um, I, I think his parents put their time out here, but. Um, you know, it's good to see him doing his thing. Good to see everybody doing their thing. I saw Montgomery. Did y'all see Montgomery? Three touchdowns. Yes, David Montgomery was mm. killing yes, the game. Mm. What? He uh, he he got rejuvenated out there. He he left the Bears. Got rejuvenated with them Lions. You know, he must. You got to stay on animal teams. Keep him on these animal teams because he's playing like <laughs> what 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 Brent. Mm. Say what you gotta say, wrong, man. I'm trying to figure it out. Like, aren't outside of the commanders, who who is an animal team? Uh, <laughs> are, 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 the Chargers, Chargers, Chargers ain't that's an animal. Two. Chargers, okay, that's, that's two. two. Commanders Browns, and Chargers. Browns ain't an animal. It's a color. Man. Raiders, <laughs> Ravens, the Ravens, the, the Raiders, the Raiders, the Raiders, Raiders, Raiders. Yep, the Bucks, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, we got the uh, Texans Saints, and all. We're on the same now. Uh, yeah. no, we're, we're, let me keep going. Uh, I don't got no more. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Texas, you know, the Texans, you know, the Dallas Cowboys. There's a lot yeah. of teams that's not an animal, man. Seven out of 32. I, he was just trying to that's call right. me. No, that's right. No, I was just trying to. <laughs> I was trying to call me out? To, nah. Toya. Like, Toya, man, um, tell, it, tell him to stop calling me out. You know him. <laughs> Jets. Didn't he say the Jets? Jets. All Come right, on, Diddy. Man. Chill out. The Giants. What, what, right, what's the Giants? Yeah, what? yeah, see, it's only the teams you care about. The Vikings? I mean, they like a, oh, You should have came know, out there with Kirk Cousins. You should have said that earlier. I wouldn't even think about it. Kirk Cousins is dead to me, you know. Just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you don't really care about the Vikings. Oh, no, Toya just going to say, well, she ain't, uh-huh. ain't going to defend me. She's, she's not confirming or denying <laughs> anything. And Toya, I see you this week, man. I see Get on my Peloton, sweat something off, anger. Uh, um, but no, you know, so we, we like to see them. But again, this is about Iowa State. So Austin, what is one of your most favorite stories about playing at Jack Trice Stadium 
and Iowa State. What is one of your what's one of your favorite memories out there, man? Um, I'll give you a two. We played Texas Tech my senior year. I threw five touchdown passes. That was a lot of fun. We had a, we had a good game. That was the first time I beat Texas Tech at home. And then for me, it was always getting to play in front of my dad. My dad played there in the late 70s. So being able to look up and see him before the game every game, like that was always fulfilling to me. He's not with us anymore. Uh, but that's something I always remember and hold dear to my heart when I was playing. Mm. I used to play in front of your, your pops, man, where he played. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Um, and, you know, condolences to that. I know it was, it was a while ago. Yeah, the five. Um, them five tutties will help a lot too. Think we're paying and losing all the other times. You know, you know, like five touchdowns. Y'all you know, beat me a couple of times, but I'm gonna get y'all back. My sophomore right. year, we were a team ten. Right. You know how it goes, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. tough. I'm sledding. You know, these boys are seeing it right now. You look, you know, last year and then this year, obviously rebuilding. They got some young talent, so I know what that's like. You know, being in a system where, you know, if you have one injury, Curve knows this too. You have one injury on a young team or a team with no depth, like you're looking, you're looking down the barrel. You're like, okay, what are we going to do? Like we done. Um, so, you know, to have a team that young and they showed signs of it, obviously uh, in the first half against Oklahoma and it's shown signs all year, but again, putting all of it together, that four quarters, like that's hard for a young team to do. Like they got young leaders, young leaders are younger. Like I was thinking about that today, like before coming right. out with y'all, I'm like, man, it's a, it's a tough spot for some young, a young team to be in. Well, we talked about this a couple of times, Austin, is that the fact that you got four new coaches in in, in uh, high level positions uh, from mm-hmm. the running backs, receivers, OC. Um, you got you got these coaches that are new in their first year. Um, we talked about, a, you know, Curve always talks about next man up and you lose five starters. It is next man up. These new captains that are on the team got to step up and, and show what they can do um, because now it's all on their shoulders before they can sit back and say, oh, we got somebody there. And I, I ain't really got to worry about it too much. I got to be prepared, but I'm going to be as prepared. Now these guys got to be really prepared. And the back, the, the next level got to be even more prepared too because you don't know what's going to happen. Because everybody's so new, they're going to be trying to find the right pieces to put together, trying to find the right schemes in there that's going to work for what they're trying to do. And so, yes, there's a lot of growing pains out there right now that we are experiencing. And so these lulls we have, you know, oh, beating Oklahoma State, you know, ups and downs, you know, Losing the, losing the teams we shouldn't lose. We shouldn't use the OU. We shouldn't, I mean, we shouldn't use Athens, Mac school. We shouldn't have lost to them 10 to, 10 to 7. Um, you know, then we beat Oklahoma State. Yeah, Oklahoma's good. Oklahoma always has a always has a team. They're always tough. Um, you know, but we got we got spanked in that second half. Um, you know, we showed light. Going against TCU, you know, we can play these, these guys well. Um, so we just got to show up. And that's what I'm hoping we show up. And I'm hoping that the team – um, you know, understands the brevity of what they're doing this week, especially with the Jack Trice 100 game, you know, five members of the Trice family in the stands, um, people out there wearing all their Jack Trice gear, wearing these special uniforms um, that have to pay homage to different parts of Ames College, Iowa State College, and Jack Trice. Mm-hmm. What is about to happen on Saturday? And it's a night game, seven o'clock game, like, I thought this was going to be the 11 o'clock game. I got to be up at the Buckcracker Dime for our tailgate. And then they said 7 o'clock. Oh, so for the fans, please don't be too drunk. Please don't be too drunk. I know it's a 7 o'clock game. Don't party too hard. Make it to the game. Be awake. Take a nap. Go in your car. Take a nap. But make it to the game. Um, but it's just, again, these, these, these young men are going to be out there, um, and they're going to they're gonna try to bounce back. But I just hope they don't make stupid mistakes trying to overcome and overcompensate for what they think they did last week because this is a different team they're preparing for. And you all had to prepare for a lot of things and y'all and y'all kind of competition in your life. So y'all know exactly what, what this is going to look like to bounce back from a loss like that. So this question is for all three of y'all is the biggest loss that hurt the most at Iowa State for you. And I don't know who wants to go first, but the biggest loss that you experienced um, at Iowa State and then after that, I want to know what happened that next game, whether you lost or, or you won. I want to know what happened if you remember what happened in that next game. But I just want to hear if from y'all about that. <clears throat> well, for, well, for me, I don't doubt it's the Michigan State game. I mean, you know, we can go to any further in the NCAA tournament. You know, we were playing Michigan State, you know, in Detroit. And so you know how that goes. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we were, were on such a great – run um i i saw the the national championship trophy 
months uh, before the season started, and I wanted it. I wanted it really, really mm. bad. Um, so throughout the year, that's the only thing I was playing for. You know, it was the season was was almost a complete buzz because it feels like we just buzzed through it to get to that point and to lose that game the way we lost that game uh, to the eventual you know national championships that champion uh, winner that made it that much harder. Harder, but to lose that game, you know, I'm originally from Detroit. Uh, the game was in the palace, so family and friends and everyone was there. You know, to lose that game was, was, was you know, the most disheartening in my career. And unfortunately, that was the last one because after that, you know, I declared for the draft and, you know, the rest is history. So definitely that Michigan State game. Okay. I, I mean, for me, because, you know, Texas guy, man, in any Texas team we played, I hate to lose to, but I think – the game that I had the most people at would have been our TCU game. And, you know, you know, like Marcus said, man, just being back home, playing in front of your friends and family, and, you know, they finally getting a chance to see you not on TV uh, and in person. And for us to kind of lose that, that was my junior year. And so it was a lot in limbo that year for me personally and uh, decided to stick it out. So I came back for my senior year, but that was a tough one to lose because I know I personally accounted for like 35, 40 tickets high school friends and folks I hadn't seen, you know what I'm saying? Um, so that one hurt losing against Texas too. I hate losing against Texas, but <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Yeah, everybody hates that one. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll say similar to Marcus, the last one was always, the, you know, that's for me, the, you know, uh, we played at Boulder a long time ago when big 12 was, you know, when Colorado was still in the big 12, mm -hmm. I tore my ACL and MCL. It was the second to last game of my senior year. So hmm. the next game after that was a home game against Missouri. And not to mention, we had just lost to Nebraska. We was five and five, tear my ACL, go five and six, come back Missouri at home against, uh, I think Jerome Tiller was a starting quarterback that came in after me as a freshman uh, and lost that game. So in the season five and seven, after tearing up your knee, that was a tough one for me to swallow. Um, but I will say like, you know, those are the type of games, and I'm sure Marcus, you can agree with this. Like, those are the type of, they build you as a man, build you mm -hmm. as character. Like, I think about that like now, right. um, and it's it feels like it was nothing but the time. Like, you know, it was tough. It was really tough. So, I would say, yeah, losing to Colorado at Colorado my senior year was tough for me. Mm. That's what's up. Yeah. I mean, we all, you all, you have those, um, you know, you bounce back from those, and those are the toughest ones to, to deal with. But, you know, thanks for sharing that. And, Austin, where are you originally from? Forgive me for I that. I grew up in Ames. Oh, you grew up in Ames. Nice. Yes, okay. All right. Um, I, I don't think I knew that. Huh. Okay. That, yeah. that's he, only said it at the top. he only said it at the top of the pod. Just <laughs> 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 you know, just because. I'll see you Saturday, George. Hey, I'll see you Saturday, George. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't stand y'all. Hey, we didn't have that many people talking on the, on the chat today, and I don't have access to a lot of stuff, so I can't see the stuff. Shit, we got to get this fixed. Um, I said ship, not shit, y'all. I don't you know. Whatever. Um, but <laughs> we close this episode out because we've been on here about an hour. Um, Austin, I want to give you an opportunity to talk about anything that you haven't talked about. Um, Brandon, we don't care that you saw him playing Ames. Brandon Thomas is on here. Yeah, you do him like that. I'll probably jump on. Yeah, we've been, we've been waiting for your commentary, Brandon. Uh, <laughs> but as, as we do, you know what? What's your favorite Ames memory? You know, you know Ames, Iowa State. You know, you growing up there. That's why I was asking the question, Kirby, because it was going it was going to frame my my follow up question. Oh, I'm sorry. I jumped ahead. This, I got to let you hold, man. My bad. I, I, I apologize. You know, I cut you off sometimes, too. I get it. I, yeah. I get it. Hey, man. I did see yeah. you last Brandon, time. Brandon told out. me to jump in. Brandon told Brandon me. Brandon didn't say that. Brandon, <laughs> you Brandon, Brandon didn't say that. Man, you lied. Um, <laughs> oh, Brandon said he was being Betty Crocker. And if you don't know what Betty Crocker is, that means he was being on a date, caking. Um, so when he saw you play, he was caking <laughs> with some girl. I don't know. We don't know who it was. Um but your favorite, your favorite memory in Ames, your favorite memory um, that you could think of, even growing up, just watching the games out there. But what's one of your favorite memories about, you know, football, Iowa State football, basketball, any Iowa State sport? What's your, what's your favorite memory? Well, I got to give it a plug in, in the in the honor of the legacy of the hundredth game. 
you know, that's that's a big thing for me. Uh, my, like I said, my dad played in the late 70s, early 80s, you know, started out, I think probably like early 70s, late 60s. You know, it was regular for black folks to be on a team, get scholarships to like he was one of the, you know, in my in my eyes, one of the pioneers, along with Dwayne Crutchfield, um, you know, some guys that he played with at Iowa State. So for me, it's it's the legacy side. And my mom still has this picture from the newspaper of me standing out next to Jack, you know, uh, with, with my leather jacket on. So, I, you know, that's something I I really do remember and take pride in from come from Ames. Like people was like, oh, yeah, because when you say Iowa State, oh, yeah, hey, Jack Trice. Like, so, it, you know, it's 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 a media, especially out here in California where people don't know much about Iowa state, but they do know who Jack Trice is. So that that's important to me. And then for me, I grew up on the hillside before they knocked out the hills. And, you know, I was a kid playing football on the, on the side, um, you know, watching guys like Sage Rosenfels and Todd Bandauer and Lane Danielson. And even, you know, in high school watching curve play and like, you know, it was, that was the coolest thing for me ever to see those guys, you know, from the from the uh, from the grass and playing tackle football. So that's always a memory that I cherish is seeing the guys that did it before me and being able to do it at, at a high level like they did. I'm glad you shouted out Sage and Lane. They were supposed to get on with us tonight, but they had some conflicts and everything like that. Oh, you know, I know how Sage and Lane move now. You gotta, hey. you gotta, you gotta get a calendar. You gotta book some. Time. Yeah. Sage, <laughs> Sage, Sage was like, time. he was like, during the day works better for me to be honest. I'm like. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> who, who does it? During, I mean, if we if this was pre recorded, Sage, yes, yes, yeah, Sage, I'm calling you out. You're my homie. Um, oh, you know, but man, uh, it's crazy. But Sage, I, I, I did, he's uh, got a lot of time on his hands. He, that's why he's talking about during the day. He was, He'll call he was, me once a week. Like, like hey, that. What do you think about this idea? I'm like, Sage, <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with it, man? He's, he's funny, dude. I love, yeah, I love good him. dude. I just actually, so I got these, uh, we got these, uh, Iowa State playing cards. Um, I didn't get one of you yet, Austin, but I got some of Sage. I sent him to Sage, so Sage is is, uh, is going to sign them. Um, so he got them right now. TD Big Troy Davis got a couple, got some cards. He's signing for us right now. Um, I got a I got a box over here with Will McDonald's jersey and some cards for him to sign. So Will, um, give me your agent's information because I don't have your direct. I'm tired of texting Brees Hall, you know, bothering him. It's the season. I can't be I can't be bothering them. I need agents' numbers so I can say bother the agents. That's their job. Um, but even if you give me your stuff, I'll call you. But, um, but no, just, just these guys and, you know, going back and, you know, looking at the history and some of this stuff is, I don't know the history before like 1997, you know, I'm a, I'm a transplant and 88 was the first time I had heard about Jack Trice stadium. Um, you know, that's when, or Jack Trice was when my grandfather went out there for the unveiling of the statue. So my grandfather, my uncle Nelson and my cousin uh, Chester jr. Were out there. I was eight and had chicken pox, so I couldn't go. And then 97, my football coach, uh, before the before the, the school year, um, or before mm -hmm. class one day in his office, I always go to his office before before class, and he's like, Hey, there's this article in the plain dealer, you know, they just renamed this the stadium, you know, Trice, and, and that's the, your last name. Are you related? I'm like, I don't know, but give me the article, let me find out. And that's how I found out. And so again, you know, as we look at a hundred years now, um, what shit, what hold on, ship just said something, but as we look at a hundred years right now, um, Oh, Blaze Bryan is going to be on a uh, old man strength on Wednesday. So Blaze, he's signing some cards for me too right now. Um, but you know, Blaze, we get it's like you know, it's nostalgia when you get all these 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 names and things like that of people that I've seen. Um, you know, and it's funny, you know, when I talk about and look at you know the the history and the legacy there, you know, and I look at right now and not even just the football legacy, but my homeboy James Reed and uh, uh, Cherie, they are they're going to be at the game. I mean, their daughter is now. A cheerleader. So it's like you look at the how long ago that was. And Marcus, you know, Jay, like how long ago that was. And now his mm -hmm. daughter is there. Like I remember when they didn't have no kids. Right. And you know how long it is in that long running center. But shout out to Summer. So Summer Reed will be the host for my daughter. So my five year old daughter, Aria, will be cheerleading at the halftime performance for the game on Saturday. And Summer is her sponsor. Mm -hmm. So I'll be on the field recording Aria um, in Summer. Uh, because that's my homeboy. Hold on, Aria, come here. I gotta bring Aria on real quick. So she's gonna be cheering. She ain't got her outfit on, but I think she just took a bath and got her, her pajamas on. So she's gonna think she's pretty and she's gonna want to wear these. But you know, just bringing it back, and especially with this, you know, hundredth anniversary, bringing every back. And I've been trying to get everybody that played under them lights to get back if they were able to get back. What's up, booty? So we're talking. I'm talking about you right now. Come here. We're talking about you and how you're gonna be cheerleading 
on at the game on Saturday when we go to Iowa. So I want you to tell everybody, you know, what you're going to be doing, who you are, and um, how much fun you're going to have. Okay, hold on. Hey, baby. Mike. Oh. Okay. Oh, don't mess up the hair. Don't mess up the hair now. <laughs> Tell who you are. My name is Aria, and I'm five years old. And what are you going to be doing Saturday at the at the oh. football game? Cheerleading. And are you going to have fun? Are you excited? Yes. What else do you want to say? <laughs> Say it. <laughs> Go cyclones. That's right. <laughs> now, yeah. this is one of her jams right there. So we got to play that. But hey, we close out this episode inside the story. We want to let y'all know. But hey, Austin, we appreciate you jumping on. Marcus is all way. They can play as all way. Shipley's running in the background. Thanks for everybody watching. Um, Jack Trice 100 game. Go to Jack Trice 100. Find out about all the information about things that are going on. Um, library is Thursday. Camara, if you say Jack Trice, the links are there for Twitter, obviously, proceeds, whatever you buy. Comes back to the company, so there's no money out of your pocket. You can still support us. Um, you know, follow us on any social media, and uh, we will holler at y'all. Shout out! Let's go. Peace. <laughs>